and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be kind of um, an update on what's going on with my mom. A lot of people um, are friends and family who watch this channel and you guys are concerned and really wanting to know. Um, so I've been given her blessing to um, update you guys on this channel. Sorry that I'm not looking my greatest. Um, and my background isn't looking my greatest. It's kind of an impromptu, uh, impromptu video um, today just to give you guys an update. Um, so we're getting kind of conflicting information from the doctors. I'm a little bit frustrated to be honest with you. Um, so we've been getting biopsies all along. And they've been coming back saying, um, I can't remember if it said stage or grade on the actual report. Um, but it always said one, which is the least um, alarming number. Okay. Um, so we have been cautious. We have been alarmed, but not super alarmed. Okay. Um, but her symptoms have been alarming because they have been escalating. So when your symptoms escalate, you are concerned. When you are becoming more fatigued, you are concerned. And when you are experiencing these things, no matter what the reports say, you are concerned and you are alarmed because you are in a tremendous amount of pain and discomfort, right? Because cancer at any number um, on a report is concerning and alarming right to begin with and then when you're feeling these things and they're becoming more and more intense um you know it's it's concerning so we you know went to her appointment and we said hey you know these things are escalating so um we were told um due to some factors that as a family we've decided that we are going to keep private um between the family, um, close members of the family, and close friends, um, surgery is not an option um, for treatment here. Um, the treatment that we had been hoping would be helpful um, with hor hormone therapy via an IUD has failed completely and utterly. It has not reversed the cancer. It has not made it better. It is still advancing. Um, the last time a biopsy was done, it still said stage one, yet our symptoms are still advancing, right? So they're very concerned. Um, so they sent us to radiology, to the radiation department. So we spoke to a radiation specialist, and there they said that the CT scan, the biopsies, and all other testing that we have had prior is irrelevant. They do not believe that that grade or that staging or anything that we have been told prior is relevant. They don't feel comfortable saying what stage or what grade the cancer is in. There has been no blood testing to give a cancer blood level. Now, apparently, after speaking to other people who either currently have cancer within our family or have been through cancer, because I have a dear friend who has been through cancer, um, it is quite common for cancer patients to have their blood drawn quite frequently and have their blood level checked. Um, our cousin Laura was stage four cancer and she was always having it checked um, and our um, we have another member of our family who currently has cancer and she has her levels checked and she was telling me the difference between Laura's levels and her levels and how they gauge where you are in terms of we should worry and we should not worry 
kind of thing. And so she was wondering what mom's levels were. So I was curious about that. So mom and I went and looked through all of her different testing that had been done to find that mom has never had this test. We don't know what her levels are because they've never done them. So that's a question that we are going to most definitely ask. Why is that not being done? Um, so we had our appointment with the radiation specialist and we were told that um, everything that we've been told prior, again, um, in terms of the testing that had been done is really irrelevant in terms of the data that was gathered. So that was disheartening. And then the other thing that we were told was that um, the options that we were told that we had, we, we were told that we had about six or seven different options in moving forward in case what we were trying failed, which it has. Now we're being told we have one option, radiation therapy and that is all. Now there are two different options within radiation therapy but that's more dependent on how bad the cancer actually is once further testing is done because we need two more tests to determine where the cancer actually is. Um, that was disheartening. You have one option. So we asked what happens if we decide that we don't want to do this radiation therapy and we were told if you do not pursue um, radiation treatment your symptoms will continue to get worse you will be in more pain and eventually you will die it may not be tomorrow it may not be in a couple months it may take a couple of years but eventually you will die so this is your one option. So nobody answered the question of, well, what if this treatment fails? What is the backup plan? Is there just no backup plan? That wasn't answered. I don't think there is an answer to that one. I don't think there is one. So um, they're just assuming that it's going to work, I guess. Um, we never got a straight answer to that. So um, I've been doing research. I've been reaching out to different places, but I've either been hung up on, disconnected from, or um, they've referred me to someone else. There is a Cancer Center Treatment of America um, facility, but it is out of state. And because of the insurance that my mother has, they will not see her um, or really deal with us unless they get a substantial amount of money up front um, and we do not have that that kind of income or that kind of savings to be able to go see them so that is out of the question so we are kind of stuck with this radiation treatment um, as a result we are um, still needing a little bit of financial assistance and so um, just to be able to schedule transport back and forth because my mother lives an hour away from the hospital in which she's going to be needing to get her treatments. Um, the treatments are very scary. They are high doses of radiation within her body. Um, it's going to take a full it's going to be taking a wall up on her body. She's going to have to be away from home staying in hotels to recover at least a couple of days a week uh, in the best case scenario. In the worst case scenario, she's going to be at, away from home for weeks at a time um, to get her treatment and then to recover um, and trans, you know, going back and forth from her home. Um, I'm going to have to be there with her after um, the one treatment because she has to be um, under anesthesia for it and then after that she has to be with somebody for that 24-hour period to help her out of it and to, to help her. Um, so I'm going to be with her through all of that but um, because of that um, you know we're going to need to pay somebody to take care of her animals, their care, the transport back and forth, um, 
you know, the hotel stay, um, we are going to get a discount because um, of the way that the hospital works in conjuncture with the American Cancer Association and the hotels, you can get a discount because you are not there on vacation, you're there for cancer treatment, um, but it's still going to be costly and we are blindsided by this. We did not know that it was going to be this substantial or that it was this bad or that we were in a position where um, we had only one option left um, and it was this. So my mother is clearly very upset. Um, I've been looking into getting a second opinion but it just looks like in this area there really isn't. Um, but even if there was, getting there would be a problem. Um, it's very, very hard for us with scheduling to get places. It's very, very hard for us to get proper transport um, to be able to afford it. We don't have very many friends and family in this area um, that can help us out. Um, it's basically my boyfriend and I, and we have been going to so many different appointments throughout this whole year for many different medical issues um, that, you know, we're running out of days in which he can take off of work or half days that he can take off of work, that we're having time, you know, a hard time just scheduling in getting the, um, you know, like she has um, an appointment tomorrow for um, a scan and we had to um, reschedule another scan that she needs um, just because we couldn't, you know, work it out and we have to budget in taking a cab and she doesn't really like doing that because it's uncomfortable and it's hard and we have to like budget it and it's so expensive because the cab company has to come from my town to her town and then get us back and forth and it's an hour drive and that's really inconvenient for them so they charge us quite a bit of money and that's a lot to have to budget you know that's like her groceries for a month that's the same exact cost about as it costs to do one way for um, the cab and so if we have to do it both ways that's like a really substantial amount of money um, just to put it into perspective for you but I mean if we have to do it we'll budget that but I have to pre-plan that budget so that means that I have to really save up for that so I can't just say okay we can just do it next week because that might not be in the budget because um, you know we have to make sure that she has food on the table and that the you know, her living expenses are taken care of. And so that's why we're doing a charity marathon um, on Twitch TV um, the week before Thanksgiving. Um, so if you are a caster and you would like to cast for it, I will put the schedule in the link down below. You can um, contact me. Um, all of my contact information is down below. Um, I will also put the link in for the Discord. Um, you can also join the Discord. Excuse me. Um, for the marathon. And take part in that. We need casters. We need people to promote the um, marathon. I will put the link to the marathon down below um, to where the marathon is going to be. And I'll also put the donation link down below if you want to help monetarily. Um, because, yeah, we are needing transportation just to get back and forth to her um, scans, to her doctor's appointments for her pre-treatments. Because before she can even start the treatment, there's going to be about 30 days of pre-testing. Then there's the actual treatments themselves that are going to be over a month worth of stuff. And then there's going to be about a month of recovering from the treatments and then there's going to be seeing if the treatments worked and then it's going to be did the treatment work and if the treatment didn't work what do we do now so the next couple of months are going to be really really hard I don't think that we are going to be able to actually start the treatments until February because of all the holidays coming up I suspect that January is going to be all pre-testing and I suspect that
February is going to be actual treatment, but I am not completely sure on that. Um, I think it's kind of going to depend on how these tests come back and when we can actually do them because we can only do the one test tomorrow and I don't know when we're going to be able to do the MRI because it really depends on when we can afford to get transport to the other one. And um, it's it's kind of rough too because scheduling, like the, the ladies aren't always nice. Like when we had to reschedule the MRI, they seemed really pissed off and mad that we couldn't just do it the same day because like they had worked so hard to try to schedule it. But, you know, um, my boyfriend does so much for us and he, you know, does what he can and he does above and beyond and he works so hard to help us. And Everybody's doing their best. And I just hate when they they treat you like that. You know, everybody is doing their best. And he doesn't need to feel bad about him doing his best. And we don't have to feel bad about struggling to make it all work. You know, like we're, we're going through a lot as it is. Trying to make everything work. And I'm trying to do the best for her and I feel like I'm, I'm letting her down um, so we're doing this marathon because even though everybody's doing the best that they can we feel like that might help us to be able to do a little bit more because if we can just be able to arrange the transport and, you know, that money will be able to help at the hotel and the hotels that we're going to need when the treatments start and um, food, you know, because she's going to have to eat and um they said that if she needs the second treatment which is more intense she'll feel sicker so I was thinking like we could it's gonna have a kitchen at that hotel like if she need the hotel that we get is gonna depend on like which hotel we stay in is gonna depend on which treatment she gets and if she gets the worst treatment she's gonna feel worse so it's gonna be more like a suite so that one's going to have a kitchenette. So I was thinking that I could make her soups because she's going to feel so sick and so nauseous that I figured like soups would be better for her. So like she could have broth and things because that would be more nutritious anyway. And so I was thinking that, you know, we could get those kinds of meals for her that would be more nutritious and healthier for her, you know, like heartier things. And it's going to be cold. So, you know, warmer things, you know, because she's going to be so cold anyway, because she's going to be going through so much. Her body's going to be so broken down from the treatments. So that was my thought for that. And then if we're going to be at the regular hotel, I don't want her to be eating like crappy takeaway food either. So I was thinking that we could do more like grocery store meals or whatever. And I don't know, like we would, we wouldn't, we wouldn't you know, we would use the money well, and I would be really transparent with all of you if you do decide to donate on what it's going to, you know, I would be going to the the cab companies and the the, the cab company and the, the grocery store and the hotel, and I would totally be willing to prove that I just want to do whatever is going to be best for her and um because this is my mom and I just I don't want to lose my mom and they're telling me now that what they've been you know they're saying that what they've been saying all along could be wrong so what if it isn't stage one what if it's not what if it is worse I don't know I don't understand how what they've been telling us all along could be wrong because that's basically what they were insinuating at the last appointment 
I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now, to be honest with you. I'm confused. I was kind of talked to like I was ignorant, but I've been listening to every single thing that's happened in every single appointment. Um, I feel like we're being backed into this really intense treatment. Um, we have very limited options, and um, and so now we're rallying the troops, and I am so thankful for every single person who has stepped up, who has said, like, I will help you with this marathon, no problem. I will be there for you and your family in your time of need. I appreciate every single one of you, and I appreciate every single one of you that's hearing this for the first time and is here for us. Like, we appreciate you. We thank you. I know that my mother feels the same way. Um... And we would do the same for you. I know a lot of people, like, I didn't want to do this marathon again for a while. I was going to step back from it because, you know, we've been dealing with all these things. And it's just, it's hard to do marathon things and deal with all the things that we've been dealing with. And, um, you know, there are other medical things going on as well. And, uh... Everybody has really stepped up and they've been like, you've been doing these marathons and we think it's great what you've done in the past and we just want to pay it forward to you guys because it's you guys again. And um, it's just so great that people are coming forward and, uh, and are willing to do that. Please ignore that. That is a... Uh, that is a crank call. Anyway, um, I really appreciate it, and uh, my mother really appreciates it, and uh, we are so thankful and so grateful. And I would like to take a special, um, special time to thank a few individuals who have gone above and beyond for this marathon already, even though it is still in the planning stages. Um, his online moniker is Poopy, but his real name is Brandon. I want to thank him because he has um, really taken charge and done a significant amount of things. I want to thank Gaming Phobia. He has done amazing things for this. I want to thank um, God of Knockers. He has done a, an amazing, um, amazing thing for it. I want to also thank Shelly. He has done amazing things. And I want to thank my mom because it is for her, but she cannot just sit on the sidelines and have people do things for her. She needs to also be involved. So she has done amazing things for scheduling and um, is actively working on it. And I think that's actually good for her because it's giving her something to focus on. And um, she's very actively involved in it and it's lifting her up. And I think that's really good right now. Um, so again, if you would like to participate in the marathon, um, you can contact me with all the information below. And if you would um, like to just hang out, um, the link to where we're going to be is there. It is the 13th at midnight to the 19th and spaces are filling up. I am going to be there. Um, I am Secret October X. So if you see Secret October X, you will be seeing me. Um, I'm going to be doing a mother-daughter cast to end the marathon with my mom. Um, and I'm going to be sprinkled throughout the marathon and my mom and her boyfriend are going to be doing the midnight ride. Um, I think they might be starting the marathon off. And then um, there are going to be lots of other wonderful casts um, throughout from Twitch streamers. And you might find a new Twitch streamer that you love. You might have never gone to Twitch before now and you're discovering it for the first time. Um, and you might find that you really like it. So it's going to be great video games um, and other content. I know that my one friend does amazing art and he's going to be doing his um, art um, during his cast and talking to people and hanging out. So it'll be a really, really great, um, time. So I hope that you come and I hope that this video was helpful for you to understand and to get an update. And if you would like more information about the marathon 
or about anything else, um, I will do my best to help you out with that, and all the information to contact us is down below. See you on Friday for the next video. Bye, guys.